Um, have speaking of fucking Sonic Heroes, have you guys seen that? Do you remember that the 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 meltdown that was the Sonic 25th anniversary? This band was on stage uh, singing like the theme song of Sonic Heroes. Oh, and like the guy's like Sonic Heroes, and then he like, and then he puts, and then there's like, there's this lady who's too old to give a shit about Sonic. For some for some reason, out of the entire crowd, he he just picks her, at, like she's going to s- sing back. So he pulls, he puts the microphone up up to her face, and she's just like, what? <laughs> and so, so then he says, uh, he he comes back and he's like, uh, this guy knows what's up. All right, come on, Sonic Heroes, and then he gives it to this guy and the guy's like kind of singing half-assed and then out of nowhere some guy comes from the side and just grabs the mic and, so, and he's like nah! and then he just starts screaming and the guy like pulls oh the mic God. away <laughs> What's up, guys, and welcome to episode 19 of Podcast Reload. It's the general gaming podcast by Sifted.net subscribers, where we invite community guests onto the show to talk about the games industry in all its weird ways. I am your host, Vin Hill, and joining me, as always, is my co-host and fellow Japan dweller, Evan Piotrowski. Hello, everyone. And joining us as well is, of course, our community guest, and this week joining us is Mitch. Hey, what's up? Uh, we have a uh, little bit of housekeeping. Uh, first housekeeping point, um, I just wanted to apologize for last week's performance <laughs> by uh, Evan. I mean, it was just absolutely horrendous, man. Uh, if you got anything to save yeah, yourself, because, yeah. I mean, come on. Uh, I don't know. I think I <laughs> apologized uh, profusely at the end of that episode, so um, nothing, nothing to add to that. <laughs> Alright, man, I'm just kidding. No, no. No, it's, it, seriously though, man, I think you did really well. Like, I was, I wasn't worried or anything, but I was, I was genuinely curious just to see how it would, like, turn out because obviously it's the first, first, like, podcast episode which I've missed, like, for Podcast Reload and just, it was really strange just sitting back and listening to it, you know, like, without me being on it. It was like, because normally, like, when I'm editing it and stuff and I, I just, I'm constantly, like, reviewing what has been said. So when I listen to the final thing, like, the next day after I've edited it and it, it's on YouTube for everyone else to hear, you know, I'm, I'm normally listening to it. Oh, yeah, like, I remember this part. But this was, like, the first time I was listening to it. It's like, I don't remember. Oh, yeah, I didn't, uh, I, t- I didn't edit that. That was good, you know. Throw me in the water, right? Learn how to swim. It took me like eight hours to edit that podcast, but I did it. So now I know. Now I know how to do it. No, yeah, I think. I mean, when I first started out, like editing it and all that sort of stuff, like it was rough at first, but you know, I, I think it did really well. Like it was, it sounded good. It was, it was edited well. It was a bit long, but other than that, like it was, it was good. Well played. Uh, another point of housekeeping, I've got a new mic, so I sound silky smooth. Uh, yeah, I finally made the uh, dive. I actually jumped in and finally got a uh, Blue Yeti. Um, I've been putting this purchase off for a while because I didn't know like how long the podcast would like go on for. I didn't know if it was going to do well. I didn't know if we were going to get like anyone listening to it. But, you know, it, it seems like we've got a, a little solid uh, sort of listening base now. So I thought, you know, it's time to invest and hopefully... This episode is silky smooth, especially because our guest has got a really nice mic, and Evan's got the same mic as me, so this should be probably the cleanest episode we've ever done. And the uh, third point of housekeeping, which I actually wanted to mention, was a uh, huge uh, shout-out to uh, Shane. Uh, Shane, our brother, our leader, uh, the founder of Sifted. Um, Obviously, I'm not going to go into detail about exactly what happened, but... You know, a tragedy has struck him and his family this week. And I just wanted to say, man, if you're listening, like our thoughts and our prayers are with you. And just, yeah, like it's what has happened. It's cruel. It's unfair. It's it's heartbreaking. And, uh, you know, it's it's tough, like, especially like this this year that you've already been through. Like you've already been through so much this year, man. You don't this you just don't deserve any of this. And I just want to say, like, we're all thinking of you, you know. So, yeah don't worry like if you need to take some time off if you need some time to yourself like if you need anything at all you know we're all on standby and we're all thinking about you so yeah just let us know if you need anything man and just know that our thoughts are with you like if you guys got anything to add to that uh i mean exactly what you said vin yeah shane uh just yeah been i mean all we can really do is uh you know wish you the best through this really really you know tragic time and we are thinking about you and, uh, you know, the sights, 
helped in the past and if there's anything that we can do. Not sure exactly what that could be, but, you know, there are definitely a lot of people on the site that uh, will help in some capacity if they can. And maybe just being there on the site and consuming the content and stuff is, if that's what, what you know, your wish is, then, yeah, we're definitely there for you. But, yeah, thinking of you. Yeah, I think, uh, honestly, it's like uh, this community really is a big, it's not just a community, it's like another family uh, not only for me and everyone else on here, but it's, I think it is for Shane as well. So, um, like a family, we're here to support them any way we can. So, um, yeah, I agree with everything you guys have said. So, uh, yeah, basically, uh, that's, um, I mean, what more can we say? I mean, Shane, we love you, man. Like look after yourself. Yeah. Don't, don't feel like you need to keep on top of the site too much. You know, like if you, if you need a little bit of a break, then take the break, man. Like we're, we're totally behind that. Like we're totally cool. So, yeah, look after yourself and, you know, our thoughts are with you, man. All right, cool. Um, we should probably get on with this podcast. Um, Mitch, we've got a question for you, man. Oh, okay. If you could have any games developer work on a new game, uh, sequel, new IP, remake, whatever, uh, who and what would it be? Ah, okay. So I thought I, this one was a hard one for me because that's just there's a lot of great studios out there and there's a lot of great games. One thing I thought about recently was um, Crash Bandicoot, and I, I loved that they had a racer a while back. That was like one of my new favorite racers that wasn't on a Nintendo console that I could still have fun with. That's like similar to Mario Kart, and I would love the Mario Kart team to make like a Crash Bandicoot racer. I think they'd do really awesome with that. Like there's just, there's just a couple little things they could do that to make it even different that man would be so much fun. I like literally was watching, was it the easy allies played it for a bit and I was like, God, I missed that game. (laughs) (laughs) Finn, I know you have strong feelings about uh, Crash Bandicoot. What do you have to, what do you have to say (laughs) about this? Yeah, man. Oh, well, um, Crash Team Racing's great. Like, it was a great game, you know, when it came out. Um, I've, got, I've got nothing against Crash Bandicoot. Like, I, I love them games when they came out. But I think, like, the the sort of, you know, the the big noise that it's made over the past sort of couple of years, it's it's really strange to me just because fucking Sean Layton came out on stage with a with a t-shirt on, you know. Like, people just lose their shit for a couple of years. So, you know, you get, you get in the remaster now and you, you'll probably get a... You'll probably get a remake or you know a sequel or something like if that if that remaster sells. So if you do like Crash, make sure you buy that. But uh, yeah, like Crash Team Racing, Team Racing is a great game, man. I've never played that game. You never played Crash Team Racing? No, never played it. I back in the day, I played Crash One and Two, and I really liked them at the time. But other than that, I never played another Crash game. So I don't, I don't know how it controlled. So Mitch, you. Like back in the day, like that was your game. You liked it a lot, I imagine. Yeah, yeah, I enjoyed that game. There's um, the one thing I liked about it that was different than Mario Kart was actually there was a story level, so you like would go to these little places and areas where you complete missions. Is um, it kind of like of Diddy were... Kong Racing? Ah, oh, have I played? I don't. I, I haven't played Diddy Kong Racing to be okay. honest. Okay, it it, it to... was it was like a mini open world, and you'd go to certain places on this island, and oh, then yes, it, yes, do, do, exactly do missions like or fight fight bosses by racing them and stuff. Okay, I actually do like that. Uh, I had a great yeah. time with Diddy Kong Racing back in the day. I liked how it was a bit different than your average racing game, where you could do stuff like that. And I think another great thing about that game was uh, that it just. I never thought of like there are so many different things in there that like you could have pulled from that so like I didn't know in crash like there's these missiles I never really noticed them until I replayed crash again and I was like oh I didn't even notice that these like missiles were in the game the whole time and now it's in the racer but I didn't notice it before just those like little nuances you're like oh I didn't even notice those things before. It just uh, kind of made the experience of playing crash again just like the regular game that much better. Interesting. Yeah, I, mean, I, I really enjoyed Crash Team Racing. It was probably, like, at the time, because I think it came out... Like, it was obviously Mario Kart came out on the SNES, like, way before it. But, like, the way it felt, like, the uh, like the drifting and stuff in Crash Team Racing was actually really great. Like, it, was, it sort of took what Mario was at that time and sort of took it to another level. But then after, obviously, Mario Kart got even bigger afterwards... Um, but yeah, I think there was probably a bit of uh, copying off each other at that point. But it was really, it was a cool, it was a cool little game. Like I, I probably actually preferred that game over like the normal Crash games. Could say. Yeah, um, I think if anything, I would love uh, 
in, for Nintendo in some capacity to make a racer where it is like mission based and you can uh, there's boss battles and stuff like that. I think that would be it would actually let me it would allow me to get interested in racing games. I'm not entirely it's not entirely my my genre, but uh, yeah, that would be cool. I mean, I don't I don't like serious racing games too much. Like, I wasn't really into Gran Turismo or anything when I was younger, but, like, when it when it, it has to be fun and fair a lot of the time. Like, that's the main reason why I hate Mario Kart is because it was just unfair a lot of like, the time. What, like rubber banding and stuff? Yeah, not just that, but, like, if you're in the lead or whatever and, like, some guy at the, at, who's coming in last can fire something at you that can just wipe you out, like, and it's completely out of your control, like, that's, I don't know. Like, yeah, that's my to... biggest friend's complaint about that game. Like, that's yeah. literally he he has the lead every time, and somehow one of us like just comes out of nowhere, and he gets so frustrated because it's just yeah, not, like, it's not fair. You get punished for doing well in that game, and right. I, I don't that I is, don't agree with that. That that's is true. Fair. Yeah, if you're in first place, the only thing you get out of uh, the question mark boxes are like coins, which it's like a big fuck you, basically, or yep. like bananas. <laughs> yep. Yeah, bananas. Yeah, that's about it. Yeah, totally get that. Yeah, cool, man. Cool, so uh, moving on, uh, talking about what we've been playing this week. Uh, we'll start off with you, Evan. What have you been playing this week, man? Okay, so I've been playing a little uh, game retro. called uh, Prince of Persia, <laughs> The Forgotten Sands <laughs> from 2010. <laughs> really retro? <laughs> oh, dude, that one game of the year, like in 2002 or something. Uh, <laughs> like, Jesus. Um, the only, I think it was PS Plus last month, so... Uh, yeah, at this point, I'm I'm running out, man. My PlayStation Three, I'm just I'm squeezing that thing. It's, you know, it's like I, there's nothing to play. Like I'm I'm so <laughs> I'm, I'm basically yeah I'm done with the PlayStation Three. I like I don't know what to Dude, do with it anymore. You've gone you've gone so far back that you've you've not only played all your PS Three games, but now you're playing PS Two games on your PS Three. <laughs> like that's that's pretty bad. Yeah, it's uh, but um. Ba- Prince of Persia: The Forgotten Sands is like 2010, and this is oh a couple wait years. yeah that's the that's a new one right 2010 yeah newer, so I should say newer the newer one right um, it was in the Assassin's Creed engine pretty sure but you know it was right. after like the main PS2 trilogy um, wait is is this the stylized one like the the cartoony cel shaded one or no is this no one this is the one that? after that I think that was okay. t- 2008 this is the one that they kind of uh, it came out around the same time as the movie but it wasn't based on the movie. So how do you like that one actually? Because I that's the one I I've played every Prince of Persia and I I loved the Sands of Time series, but yeah. I never got to playing that one. And I was just like, for some reason, it just looked. I just looked at it and I was like, I don't know if I can trust this one. Like with right. with my dollar, how I have is not it? even seen a screenshot of this game. So yeah, I'd be curious. It, it to looks see what you think it looks it. pretty good for a, like a PS3 game, but yeah. it just it yeah. looks janky. Right. Um, no, I, I, there's barely any, any jank in the game. Um, the trilogy is infinitely better than, than this game. Uh, I did like it, but I, I beat it in two sittings. It was a bit basic. Yeah, Yeah, it it was a very short game. One thing about this game is, you know, in the old Prince of Persia games, you'd go into a room and the camera pans up and shows you like main points that you're going to need to figure out how to get. Like a hint. Yeah, a hint from, like, how to get from A to B, right? Um, That's one thing I really liked about the trilogy is where it was more based on you had to figure out how to parkour out of this area. It was a puzzle. It was a parkouring puzzle. This game doesn't really do that. It's more of the uncharted variety of parkouring where what you're supposed to do and how you're supposed to do it is pretty much um, mapped out for you. Like, they point you in the right direction. Uh, I think every area I went into took me about 30 seconds to kind of like get my get my head in and like figure out what to do. Whereas I really liked the old games where you really had to figure out how that, you know, how the hell am I going to get out of this uh, place? So I think they're really focused on the movement aspect more so than the puzzle aspect of the parkouring. Yeah, that's that's the opposite of what I wanted out of a Prince Persia. So, yeah, I'm kind yeah. of glad that I did miss that one. You end up f- like failing because you didn't press a button at the right time. Um that sucks. Yeah, which is, like, not really what I want out of a Prince of Persia game. And, like, one thing I just wish that they do with Assassin's Creed is one of my favorite parts of... And one of the reasons why Assassin's Creed 2 is my favorite game is because they had those section, those puzzle platforming sections where you... if you, I think there was, like, eight or nine of them, and if you 
completed all of them, you got like uh, it, like the best armor in the game. Do you know? Do you know what I'm talking about, Vin? Yeah, it was the costume. Yeah, yeah I remember. Yeah, like I love those sections of of that, and it's just like playing through this. It's like I just really wish there's some more puzzle parkouring, but uh, it was okay. Uh, I don't really worth, have much more to the, say. About uh, it. Worth the free <laughs> from you got it from PlayStation Plus, right? Yeah, it was worth it so was worth free. the free. Yeah, it was worth the free. <laughs> the free. <Yeah>. Cool. <laughs> so, what about you, Mitch? What have you been playing? Oh, uh, I've been playing a couple games. I kind of, I, I'm a person that, I, I mean, if I really love the game, I'll sit there for like the whole eight to nine hours. So, like Uncharted Four did that, but uh, most of the time I flip flop. So right now I'm flipping between Persona Four because I want to. I've never played Persona before, so oh, I saw wow. it was on PS2. So I was like, oh, I'll give it a shot for on my yeah. PS3. So I've been playing that, and then I'm a little bit at for me a drought for my PS4. So I've been. Uh, I found the. Uh, the D DNC Devil May I mean DMC Devil May Cry, and oh, okay. I played part of it, but it had a remaster for like ten bucks. So I was like, oh, I'll, I really will give that a shot. And actually, I liked the combat a lot more than I used to. So I think mm-hmm. it's just me growing up a little bit as a gamer, and um, I, I used to not like that kind of combat of just combinations and button presses and all that kind of stuff. So yeah. I kind of actually learned to love it a little bit more. And so I get so frustrated when I get out of a room and it's like, right now I'm at like maybe a C or a B out of a room and I'm like, come on, I can't sure, get in there. Sure. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Actually, Mitch, I'm the same as you. I didn't play the, the old Devil May Cry games. Um, although the combat is slightly, it's a bit different than the, than DMC, but yeah, th- those games weren't my thing at all. And then I bought DMC and I, yeah, for some reason, like I grew up or I, changed my mind or it's something and i really really like that game it's the only devil may cry game that i've played through completely yeah it's kind of tough i mean i i uh i used to love hack and slash games when i was younger but so it's like as the year of gone uh, like as the years have gone by i've just like enjoyed them less and less as it goes you know yeah i think uh i'm not a fighting game guy i think that's what it is and i um i would say that dmc is closer to a fighting game control style than like your god of war Hack and slash, yeah, um, awesome, awesome game. I was surprised at how how good it was. I didn't think I'd be interested in it. Uh, so yeah, that's cool. And uh, Vin, how about yourself? What have you been playing? Uh, I haven't been playing too much because I've been I've been busy at work and I just came back from Tokyo. So uh, dealing do, doing dodgy dealings with the yakuza, as you put it. Ah, that's but, right. Yeah, how'd that, work, <laughs> how'd that how'd that uh pan out for you? Yeah, it worked out pretty well. It was, uh, it was a good weekend. <laughs> Had a lot of fun. Um, those, guys, those guys are really, really nice, as it turns out. Yeah, man, I, I lost a finger and I got a few tattoos, but I'm good. <laughs> yeah, I'm <Other than> that. <laughs> just joking. But, um, yeah, I haven't, I haven't been playing that much. I mistakenly, um, I looked, I watched a few videos on The Witcher, uh, The Witcher 1 and 2, and I watched, like, all the stories so I could catch up so I could actually get around to playing the third one, which I've had on my system for a while. And I've not actually had a chance to play it. So I finally watched all the videos and I watched like two hours of story to catch up and I was like, all right, I'm pretty, I'm pretty versed in this like this world now, so I can actually sit down and play The Witcher Three. I got into it, uh, played the intro, and then it gave me a horse and I'm just sat there in this open world and I just looked around. And I was like, man, this place is really beautiful. It's really big. Zoomed out on the map and I was like, whoa, this area is huge. And then I zoomed out even further than that and looked at the world map and I was like, yeah, fuck this. I'm not playing this <laughs> yet. Yeah, like, literally, this is- that's. That's literally what happened to me. Like I, I tried playing The Witcher Three. Like everyone said, it was a great game. I was like, okay, I'll, I'll give it a shot. And, and there's something about it that is just so, so unsettling. It's it's just too much. Like I get yeah. there and I'm like, holy cow! First of all, I have no idea what the hell I got to do because I'm like, where do I go? <laughs> like I mean, yeah. I I picked one mission and I fought a, I think it was a Griffin, and I was like. It, somehow i beat it because i was like i don't even know what these controls are and some reason i don't know why his animation of walking is so weird for me yeah it just doesn't seem very seamless or realistic for me compared to like other games i've played and so it's just so i I don't know i don't know what it was it just it really turned me off and i end up selling it back but it might be a game i might pick up again like just to go get it again and just tr- maybe I just didn't give it a fair shot, but it just, there was just something about it was just, it was too big, too big. Yeah. I mean, to that, that's on. the thing. Like I, I put like 300 hours in Skyrim. I put like 300 hours in Fallout 3. And it, I was, it was I was just going to ask, I was just going to ask you this, Vin, like yeah, it was the Skyrim is kind of like that. 
but yeah it, it like but it, like looking at my life and my personal life right now i'm just like i i didn't close the witcher because i didn't like it like i i closed it because i know i'm gonna like it too much <laughs> like, oh okay uh, just, <laughs> all right yeah, okay you so you're in the opposite yeah cause, yeah, yeah like I to, to each other own, but like I, I closed it and i was like ah this game scares me like just like i i ran around the, the open world and like the fighting's all right and stuff like it, it, you can tell it takes a lot to get used to but just the depth of it, and I was like, no, no, I just have not got time for this right now. <laughs> so, yeah, that's well, definitely it, that's a dry season game for me, definitely. So. Well, I think a part of it, too, was what I was going to do, because I, I didn't watch any of the story from one or two. And I think that's part of it that, like, kind of got me out of it a little bit. It's like, I don't know where right. I am. I don't know what I'm doing, and I don't understand this character. So, for me, I might do what you kind of did. It was just go back and list, watch all the the cutscenes for the first two games and maybe give it a second shot. It, it definitely yeah. helps, yeah. But yeah, no, I mean, I'm excited to jump back into it, but it's definitely a dry season game. Going into this game at the start of October, like, that's a terrible idea. Like, <laughs> I just, there's so many games coming out, and I'm just, no, like, just stay away from me for now, Witcher. Just stay away, so. Yeah, yeah. you know, it was, you know, one of those things, like, I'm sure you're all ready for, uh, like, The Last Guardian as your October game, but... Yep, you know, got delayed. Darn it. Got delayed. Darn it. <laughs> got delayed. <laughs> Speaking of which, we're actually going to move on now into our main topics. So we're going to kick off with our guest topic, which is you this week, Mitch. Uh, do you want to introduce your topic of the week? Yeah. So uh, I kind I was reading about my saddest delay of all time. Sadly, the South Park delay. Um, oh, right. That was like my that was my dark horse of like I just was like I love the first one and I think they improved so much of it so far what I've seen and I was like so excited and I read it and I was like it got delayed, dang it and it just made me think for a while of like, geez we've gone through so many delays not only like this year but like in so far in just the generation since like PS3 Xbox and like Xbox 360 and the Wii era which then I did some research and I was like when did uh, the when did actually like uh, delays happen? And I found out it started in 2008 and it was like, we have a generation of what well, I consider the generation of delays. It's like, there's going to be a group of people out there that sees delays as normal. But for some of us where it's like, you know, we weren't used to that. Like, so yeah. this is something that's new for us. And it's like, it's for a lot of people, it's getting very frustrating for them. And sometimes I just wanted to like, know what your guys' thoughts on delays are. And, uh, Things like how should studios actually communicate with us because a lot of the times they're telling us the wrong day and then it's like, well, we need more time. And so a lot of people complain about that, but how how else would people do that? So I think I was going to start out with you, Vin, and see uh, just like your thoughts on delays. Uh, yeah, I mean, delays are funny. Uh, I've got a bit of a weird perspective on them because I actually work in the games industry. So it's it's vastly different to me, but... As someone that's working, like, I'm actually... I don't know if you know this, but I actually work on South Park, the fractured butthole. I thought so. I, yeah. I wasn't sure. Um, yeah, <laughs> I do. So, like, I've got the perspective of that said delay, but... Answer, answer for your crimes. Yeah. <laughs> I know, right? I'm on Stealing trial. my game away. <laughs> no, but, yeah, yeah I, was, I was curious, Vin, because, yeah, this is... You have a completely different perspective than, uh, than we do, so, yeah. Like, how is it on your end? It's weird because obviously delays have only come about over the last few years because the industry is changing. Uh, games are vastly more difficult to make than they were when we were younger. So like making a PS1 game compared to a PS4 game costs way more money. It takes way more time and it has a lot more people and a lot more moving parts to it. So there's that to sort of take into account. But I think the main reason why delays come about is because of behind the scenes, like sort of stockholders and stuff like that. Because we've got to hype a game at a certain point and you've got to announce a game at a certain point. And it actually affects the stocks quite a lot. Like when a game gets announced, you should just go and look at the stocks of like Sony and how it goes up and down. Like it's it's crazy, like how much it actually affects it. So we've got to start the hype train, and it's actually a very delicate sort of system, like of how hyped someone is, so it sells more when it comes out, because <laughs> this generation of gamers aren't very smart when it comes to reading reviews. Like they'll just buy the game without actually looking at a review, sort of thing. So, like, and because of that, we've got to you know feed the hype machine. So, um, yeah, I mean it's. It's a lot of moving parts to it, basically, but it all comes down to we've got to announce a game at a certain point, 
and we've got to get a game out and because there's so many moving parts like we can't actually predict it as well as we used to, could used to you know so yeah is it so you're saying it's a bit of a vicious cycle in terms of uh, the people buying the games and the people making it they can't really break out of it yeah um it, it really depends on the game as well like I, I can't go into too much detail about south park obviously but you know they they were very do very forward in their uh press release over it and it's it's pretty much true like the game isn't quite there yet and we need a bit more time to work on it and that's generally the case like normally normally they are telling the truth but i think a lot of gamers and a lot of fans think there's a more sort of malicious intent behind it you know they they sort of think that no they're just saying that there's there has to be another reason right maybe sometimes there is but for the most part like they're telling the truth like you can't because the game you got to remember the game looks like absolute garbage until the very end you know when you're putting this stuff together and if you're in them last final months and you're finally like connecting all the dots and you're putting the game together and like you make the jigsaw sort of thing the game might not be what you wanted it to be and that's when they're like oh fuck all right we need a we need a couple more months on this to like to make it right so yeah i think the majority of that because there's so many moving parts now like we don't we don't actually see the whole game running fluidly until the closing months and if that game isn't up to scratch then you've got to go back and fix our stuff you can't just leave it in there otherwise we get games like aliens colonial marines or whatever you know right <laughs> right that piece of crap <laughs> right well so <laughs> exactly so mitch like how do you how do you feel about delays in general I, I, I think the I mean sadly it's 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 a part of the industry that's like I I kind of agree with Vin of just like obviously they I, I know they need the time to complete it um I just sadly it's it's one of those things of like I think it's because of today's connectivity and people want yeah. transparency that it makes it so difficult that I I, I w- always wish that maybe they just and and it's and it's some people's opinion some's not it's not my total opinion but if they maybe like gave like oh we have a tentative like month span and then once they get closer being like okay here's the official official date but you know it, it's so hard because it's it's game development and i think it's just because the connectivity of today's age and people just want to know that information now and they can find out that information now that it just makes it so difficult um that sadly i mean i think delays are just are here to stay whether we like them or not but uh but it's like i said when um during one of my podcasts for when the Sean Murray did the delay for no man's sky and he got death threats. It's like, well, if you release that game now, you're going to be more mad that he gave you a piece of crap than like yep. giving it to you a couple months later. And it's maybe a little bit better than what he was going to give it to you as. So, you know, sadly, just, I don't think people are patient, but they just, oh, I mean, those, those, those people are morons. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sending death threats to people because yeah. the game was delayed two months. It's like, Man, you have way too much time on your hands, and you're a very, very angry, angry person, and you should fucking get help. No, you're, you're completely right there, Mitch. I think uh, most of the problems that we look at delays now is because of connectivity and how easy it is to like find this information now. you got to remember, when we were kids, um, when a game got released, like you didn't see it until it was on the shelf, you know? Or you might have seen it in a magazine six months before, but other than that, like... You didn't know when it was coming out. Like, yeah, just, that is true. Yeah, it, like it yeah. just showed up one day, and they're like, "Oh, cool, that game's out." Like, yeah, I remember, like, I remember yeah. being like, I was way into like Final Fantasy VIII at the time, and like a couple of months, like what felt like a couple of months later, I was just walking through a store, like saying, "Oh, I wonder what the new games are." And you just look on the shelf, and Final Fantasy IX is sat there. You're like, "What the? F- where did this come from?" <laughs> you know, like you, you had no idea, like no idea. But now you know we find out the day of a delay you know we have press releases where it can get spread around the internet like so quickly i mean sifted as testament to that you know just all the news stories coming out of it it's crazy so i don't i don't even know if we we say there's more delays these days but i don't even know if that's really true like i'm pretty sure like we had just as many delays in the past but we just didn't know about it maybe you know yeah yeah, i could see that definitely talking with your friend like Oh, that game looks awesome. When does it come out? I don't know. I guess we'll just keep right. going to Toys R Us and, and checking every now and then, see when it comes out. Yeah, it's just a different oh world we live in as well. I mean, but saying that, I, I I probably believe that there's probably more delays these days, mainly because the games are just so difficult to make. Um, yeah, there's so many different moving parts. Like we've got 
so many different consoles to work with now as well like uh, games that are multi-platform i've got to work on multiple multiple platforms to and work correctly if they don't work correctly then we've got to delay the game completely because if it's a a global release and it and it works really bad on one platform then you've got to hold it back and make sure it works on that platform you know obviously some companies don't think like that but it's got to work. It's it's got to work before we can release it. It's period. You know, we we prefer to hold it back and get the shit for a month, yeah, than to and, put out a bad game. And I think like, especially now that you know we have all these talking heads and uh, like video game web websites have moved from writing to like podcasting and video casting and stuff. Like, yeah, everyone makes such a big fucking deal about delays. Like, if there's a de- delay, everyone in the podcasting world like they they talk about it. So yeah. they, they kind of build it up and make it this big thing. I mean, yeah, I, most of the time they're wrong. Most of the time there's this big malicious intent behind it. And like what gamers think as well, like podcasts will say, oh my God, they're assholes. I can't believe they delayed the game in more nicer words, I guess. But that makes it, that makes it sound, that makes it sound like they did it on purpose. Yeah. Like, exactly. why, why would anyone do that? Yeah. The, right. Like a lot, like a, Ubisoft gets it a, shit, a, a lot of shit from gamers where they think, oh, they just they announced this game too early and they knew they were going to get delayed and they just like said it was going to be that release date anyway and then they delayed it so they can keep all the, the hype train going or whatever. But you'd be amazed like how delays actually really affect game sales. Like It really does because the hype train is... It's a real thing. Like I know we talk about it like as this sort of metaphorical, like ambiguous thing, but it's completely real. Like If hype drops on a game, like it really affects sales. Uh, and then you look at it, it's like, no matter what, it's, 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 it's a double-edged sword because you either people are trying to figure out what you're making and then they talk all about that and try to hype that up as much as they can, or they talk about the game that you already have out and then it either it gets delayed and they make a big deal about that. So either way, they're going to talk about whatever studio works on whatever, um, whether they're guessing or whether they're actually working on the thing. Um, and I was actually going to move this question to you, Evan. Uh, well, there's a game, if you ever want to find out like a, a completely game that has complete transparency in its development, check out Hell, Hellblade, uh, Senua's, uh, was it Senua's Sacrifice? It's made by Ninja Theory. Like, it's really cool. If you check it out, like there's, there's, they have like complete transparency on like where they're at in the stage of development. They're doing this whole, uh, like triple A, but yet using a low budget to try to pay for it. And so it's like really cool to see the development of the game, but like just to you, Evan, just uh, a question of like, do you think stu- stu- um, game studios should be transparent and like how transparent should they be? Should they, is there like a middle ground of where they can be to try to like help with this issue that people see as? Um, well, when Vin's talking about um, like delays just being a thing, it's, 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 you know, it's bound to happen. It's going to happen. It does happen especially this fall with some big, some big games. But yeah, like in terms of a middle ground, I just, sometimes I think people or like, uh, companies release the mark, you know, they do the marketing push for the game like way too early. And I think that is a problem as well. Like putting a bit of, a bit of the blame on that. Like this is a bad example because Kojima is Kojima, but like Death Stranding, like he shows, he like yeah. shows shows up and starts like that game is not even made yet. Like when you showed it at E three, there there was Hasn't no game. Started. There Hasn't was no game. Started. All he did is like in March he made the trailer with Norman Reedus, and that was it. And then all of a sudden he's talking about the release date of the game, and the game isn't even like how much are they they haven't made anything, and they just keep releasing all this stuff. It's like that game isn't coming out until like twenty twenty. Like what are yeah, you? Yeah, that's doing? definitely. That's definitely an issue where uh, games are announced too early. I think that's that's when it becomes really damaging when a game gets delayed. Like, uh, the good example of this is Fallout 4, even though that game came out quite buggy or whatever. But when they announced that at E3 and said, oh, by the way, this is out in November, like four months, four or five months later, like everyone lost their shit about it. Like it was this crazy thing. But that was such a good move because that game was pretty much done at that point. And we didn't know about it. We didn't. We hadn't seen it. We hadn't heard about it. Nothing. It was like, by the way, this is out in November, and that was that was a good practice. And I think a lot more uh, companies need to do that. But unfortunately, the development studios themselves don't actually dictate any of that when a game gets announced or when a game is getting shown at certain conferences. Like we don't touch any of that. All of that is done by the publisher and the marketing department. 
And sure. It's but the problem is like the majority of the time the developers get the shit for that. You know, like it's it's really difficult. Like people don't gamers don't realize like who is doing what job and whose like choice this is. Like when South Park got delayed, it's like yeah, like how 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 can we dictate that to anyone but the marketing department is still hyping the game up saying yeah it's out in december and we're all sat there like no it's not <laughs> you know it's yeah it's hard that, it's that really hard. unfortunate yeah that's i mean that's just an issue where like all these people losing their minds and, and being assholes on the internet they should just if they really care that much about stuff they should actually research it and just yeah. figure out exactly like who they should be um you know, like not not attacking, but like asking these questions for if they really want to know. Yeah, but like it, going back to Mitch's question about transparency, like it's it's difficult because every every development studio has different practices which they want to keep to themselves, or for whatever reason. I'm not saying like our studios like that or anything, but you know, it would be nice if we had a bit more transparency. But a lot of the time, the issues that come out are actually from the publisher, not really the development studio. And I think the publisher needs to be a bit more transparent but I'm not so sure about development. Like, because while it's interesting to see, like, how a game is made and, and all that that cool stuff, like, looking at um, the game which you mentioned, what is it, Hell, Hell's Blade or whatever it was? Hellblade. Hellblade, yeah. Sorry, I mean, I've been watching them video docs, and they're really, really cool and really interesting, but, you know, like, if a game gets delayed, you're right. Like, you're a bit more... Like, if that game got delayed, you'd be a lot more understanding. It's like, all right, I've seen them go through this shit. Like, I can see why... But gamers need to realize that happens on every single game. Like, it's not like we're just going into work every day and just, like, chilling and playing video games. Like, oh, the game will be done when it's done. No, people are working their asses off. And, like, some people are pulling all-nighters, like, the sleep-deprived, you know, all this crazy stuff. But no one sees that. And instead, they just send them death threats or whatever sometimes. And it's it's sad. You know, like, the lack of understanding from gamers and then the lack of transparency from publishers, you know, it just amalgamates into this horrible thing where no one really understands what's happening, but everyone's complaining about it. Yeah, and I think, and I think, sadly, it's um, it's kind of like a, a loose loose situation for like, uh, not saying that this is an excuse for the person that can't do the research, but as we as we know in like today's age, like people need that information fast, and so so for some people it's hard to research that. So sadly, like it's sad that they won't be they don't able to know that or be able to try to do that but uh if they do the research i mean you can find so much if you just know the right questions like it's in every everywhere you work if you can ask the right question you can be able to get the answer you need yeah it's tough as well i mean even when people ask the right questions um people don't like the answers a lot of the time that's the problem with games sure. like every single delay for any game a publisher and a developer always puts out a press release about it, like why it's been delayed. And nine times out of ten, gamers don't believe it. Like they'll just look at it like, oh, it's just market and fluff, you know, they're just telling us whatever. Like and nine times out of ten, the the press release is like, oh, we, you know, we're really happy with the game. We're really excited where it's going. We just want to put them a few extra touches on to make it the best it can be. Like nine times out of ten, gamers look at that and go, "Yeah, bullshit." But no, that's the truth. <laughs> you know, like we do want to make the game better. We don't want to, you know, we want to be proud of this thing that we put out because once it's out, it's out. That's it. It's done. So, yeah, yeah I mean, delays delays aren't going away. I, I think companies need to be a bit more careful when they announce a game. I think that's the main problem. Like you brought <laughs> up, Evan. But yeah, yeah, it's tough. It's it's a weird beast. Yeah. So I think uh, yeah, on the on the publisher side, yeah, they need to work on. The, the marketing and when they push these games and on the other side if people feel so strongly about like i want this game in my hands right now like why is it delayed then you know read up on it and, and be a little yeah, more understand. aware of how this stuff works you know so yeah yeah it's like Both like sides. just to finish just to finish up with it it's like uh the last guardian you know there's all these people like oh my god last guardian's been delayed again but uh, people don't people haven't looked it up like people don't even know the development cycle of the last guardian like they don't realize that team eco haven't been working on this game for like the last 10 years you know like they took out three years of development when they were working on the eco remaster like a lot of people don't know that and the information's there it's in the public domain but they don't choose to look that stuff up i've heard everyone talk about this last guardian delay and zero podcasts have brought that up yeah no one i actually didn't know that see that's that's what i mean and it's not down to ignorance. And I swear I do research, and I I, I didn't even know that. But I mean, yeah. I'm not mad or anything because you know 
who cares? Right. It's another four months for 10 years you've waited, so you yeah, can wait exactly. a little bit longer. Yeah, I mean, it was on the uh, IGN um, like development docs. Like, it talks about uh-huh. like how much how much time he's actually put into the Last Guardian, and like most of it as well. Like after it got delayed uh, because of the remasters, because Sony wanted some money out of the studio, they said, "No, you need to stop making the Last Guardian work on this remaster." So they did that, and then by the time they finished it, they said, "Okay, now you need to switch from the PS3 to PS4." So really, the game hasn't been in development for that long, but everyone's up in arms about it, saying, "Oh, it's stuck in development hell." It's like, no, it's just it's just like a series of unfortunate events more than anything. Yeah. So yeah, it is down to research as well, and the, and the information is out there. Like people just need to be a bit more active in it. And, and look at that stuff, I guess. But yeah, delays aren't going away. And yeah, it, it's it's just about gamers being a bit more understanding and publishers being a bit more transparent, as you said. And yeah, hopefully it gets a bit better as time goes on. We sort of learn how to avoid this sort of stuff. Because you are right, I think it is a bit more prevalent in the, the public eye as it is these days than it was like back in the day. All right, so the the podcast reload topic of this week is unpolished but loving it and yeah, it follows up quite well yeah <laughs> yes. i can yeah there you go um <laughs> i kind of started thinking about this because i just th- wrapped up uh, uh yakuza 5 and the game is not necessarily unpolished but there is there are some issues with that game like i don't know if it's a japanese studio just saying like yeah you know well you're while well, you're in a like an in-engine in-game cutscene, if people walk into you, we'll just have them disappear. Like that, like a bunch of random stuff that you just look at and you're like, wow, like this game has some serious issues, but I don't care because this right. game is fucking great. And um, I just started thinking about this topic, like what games have we played that were uh, broken in so- in some aspect, uh, pretty broken, but that you still really enjoyed regardless of the jank. So, uh, Mitch, I'll throw this question to you. Like, what unpolished game do you absolutely love? Oh yeah, uh, this one was a hard one because I, I, it's it's hard to jank is like different for every person. Yeah. So like, uh, so that was kind of hard. But I found one. I, I I played most of the game, but I never finished it. It's not because it was janky. I think it was just I found a better game to play later. But it was Wolverine uh, Origins. The game reviewed actually pretty well. I think it was like an average of seven point eight like Metacritic yeah. score, and like the the it was so the 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 problem was like the combat part of it. Like it was good, and there um, he has this move where he can basically like unrealistically like pounce on everybody, and that's like his <laughs> big move that he can do. He can like jump from one area to the other, and then just like continually stab the person with your Wolverine claws, and. Uh, so what would happen is like that was the satisfying part and that's the part that was like never broken that was the best mechanic in the game but the problem was the rest of his fighting moves were not really up to snuff like compared to the other ones like it just didn't seem to flow right it didn't seem to like connect right when I'm hitting the buns it didn't seem satisfying so right. and 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 it was an Activision game when Activision was kind of doing all these movie properties and so like the game was not always coming out the best but It was still good enough for me that, like, I enjoyed it because that pounce move, man, like, there's nothing more satisfying (laughs) than just pouncing on the guy and just, like, stabbing. And it's just, like, not a very violent person, but, man, this one made you feel violent. I think it got an M rating, too, but... Oh, I heard, yeah, yeah, that game was really violent, I remember. Yeah, but it, it, like, that game was just, like, that mechanic itself, like, clearly that was the whole point of the game, and then the rest of it, they just ignored it but yet it was still satisfying for me that I could still play it and enjoy it. Sure. Yeah, that's uh, that's a good one. That's kind of how the Yakuza series is. Like, it's just so cathartic to beat up on people in that game. It just feels so good (laughs) to, like, grab, you know, grab, like, a a convenience store garbage bin and slam it over someone's head. um, And it just, it doesn't get old, yeah. And you can just forgive so much of the game, the rest of the game, because that part of it, the main chunk, the meaty part, is just so satisfying. Um, yeah, that's a good one, definitely. I've never played that game, but I've heard, it. yeah, it did review well. Um, all right, uh, Vin, how about you? What what unpolished game do you enjoy? Uh, this one actually came to me really easy because there's just one game, and it's in my top ten games of all time, but I forgave it for its jank, and that is Fallout 3. Fallout 3 
is one of the most broken games you have ever played in your life. Like how how they finish that and like put it out is beyond me. But it's it honestly it feels like it's been held on by shoestring and masking tape or whatever. But for some reason, I love it. Like it, when you see people like spinning their heads around or like you fall through the earth and fall into an abyss of nothing or just like all the crazy stuff that like you literally see a glitch maybe every 30 seconds or something in that game i would say like if it's bad frame rate or clipping errors or something falls through the map or just something is always going wrong with that game but yeah i love it like it's it's still a great experience and you do forgive it and it's sort of you know it's got that charm to it almost you know but yeah that's that would definitely be my pick even though those games are so loved like literally you could put bethesda and just put jank right under it just because of how all their like not all their games but like all their open world games at least have some kind of jank i would say division one division one of bethesda the people that make uh the elder scrolls and fallout them guys with like under todd howard or whatever all their games are broken and it's that engine. I know it's that engine. Like the engine is so old and outdated and like it's been built upon from other old engines and just all hacky code is all over it and it's terrible. It's one of the worst engines, but they make amazing games. It's just one of them weird things which the industry sort of forgiven it for at this point. Like, ah, oh, it's Bethesda. You know, it's okay. It's 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 charming to see like these these horrible glitches. So it's okay, let them off. Yeah. But I think with also with Fallout three is uh just there's so many moving parts within that game that like you can almost do anything. You can pick up anything. You can throw it. Oh yeah, for you sure. You can go anywhere. So there's so many moving parts in that game. It's like, well, if there's all these specific things lining up like magically and like <clears throat> you wear a hat in a specific section of the game because you <laughs> had that hat on that like no one like 98 per, 99.5% of the people have never touched that hat because you wore it in a specific section like the game crashes for some random reason. And I just think that's, it's just the nature, like you said, of that engine, how, how those, and how those games are put together. Like they allow you to go out into the world and do so many things. And there's just so many different ways to do things that it just, every now and then it just, uh, yeah. Yeah. But it's, it's strange. Like with fallout, I mean, even, even though it's buggy as hell, you see all these glitches and it's just a horrible, horrible mess ironically that game actually rarely crashes for me (laughs) you know like it never actually just dies completely like a glitch will happen you'll see it happen you're like okay that was weird but you just sort of carry on with it i think that that was an important part to it like if it it crashed every 30 seconds then it would be a different story but the fact that it was just visual glitches i think it was okay but i think even to like add to that it's like uh but at the same time you, you gotta think about it like right now we just had the witcher 3 come out recently and that has the the same type of freedom almost pretty close so almost the same kind of freedom that you have in fallout and yet they don't have those and so it's like it gets to a point where it's like maybe we should be holding bethesda to a higher standard because there is competition now that shows we can do it like it is doable that you can make this giant game with a lot of things you can do in it and it's not gonna bug out on you it's not gonna crash on you um I think now more than ever, I think it's uh, us as gamers should really probably hold Bethesda to a higher standard now because they are great game makers. And if they can make one that doesn't bug out and doesn't crash for that can make someone's experience 10 times better. Yeah. Well, speaking of that, like we'll, we'll sort of move on to like games, which have got too much junk for us to enjoy. I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure we've all, we've all played a game where it's just like, this is too broken for me to even like touch. Like I can't even play this. And saying that, with Bethesda, my pick for a game that's got too much jank is probably Fallout 4, which is kind of ironic. Like, Fallout 3 had a little had a little jank, and it was, like, it was sort of charming. But Fallout 4, like, it got to a point on the PlayStation 4, playing Fallout 4, and just thinking, right, this is 2015 at the time it was. Like, how is this still this broken? Like, you boys really need to, like, sort out your engine. And I was really actually, I was actually quite happy. I know this sounds horrible but i was actually quite happy to see them not win game of the year by a lot of publications like a lot of them gave it to the witcher 3 instead and hopefully that like i was happy about that because i was sort of hoping that bethesda would sit down in a circle and it's like all right 
why didn't we win this year? It's probably because of this engine being so broken. And it it was like Fallout Four was a lot more a lot more janky than Fallout Three, unfortunately. And it just it it's really starting to show its horrible edges, you know. Like, but what about you, Evan? Like, have you got any games that have just been too janky to play? Yeah, mine's a bit. Uh slightly different situation just because it's just a, in terms of being poorly optimized right but it um, still counts it still counts yeah and vin you know you already know what i'm going to say uh dragon <laughs> age <laughs> dragon age inquisition oh yeah okay. um on the playstation 3 why did that game even come out on the playstation 3 <laughs> Um, I was actually i was actually talking about the game of colleagues yesterday and they were just like one of the, one of the girls that was uh, stood around with us was just as as I mentioned, Dragon Age on the PS3, she just started shaking her head. Yeah, and I was like, oh god, she played it. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. It's uh, it sucks because um, I can see how that game. I like I was getting sucked in, even though it was in as, as poorly optimized as as it is. It's just uh, man, it, that game is. It's I, I've talked about this on the podcast before. Like you kill an enemy and the loot they drop, like just materializes behind you or like you're walking (laughs) you're walking through a house you're walking through a house and just shit on like the bookshelf just disappears and um like during cutscenes, like people's the textures are still popping in um the frame rate is fucking terrible yeah Uh, the draw distance sucks in terms of the you know textures and the thing is like all the all of the frame rate stuff like i i get that you know like mass effect uh, one, two, and three on their PS3 is like it runs like garbage. Like it just oh, yeah, sounds I, like I could ten forgive FPS. Frame rate. Like, yeah. I can forgive frame rate, but like when something like as simple as a fix as like loot dropping at the wrong like position in the map, like that's just laziness, man. That's just bad optimization. Like it's so easy to fix that as well. Yeah, that takes you like, know, like half button, an hour. Coding. Button prompts like won't pop up when I'm tr- you know trying to talk to NPCs, and I'm just like moving around, and then, then it finally does. I had one cutscene where. Uh, I, I don't remember the the, na- the main woman with the scar in her face, Kathleen or whatever. It doesn't matter. But she right. was talking and like her armor, she didn't have any armor on. And then like it just popped in while she was talking. Like you got to be hey, fucking dude. kidding me. Hey, dude, that, that, that sounds like an improvement. Let's, let's be honest. <laughs> well, and, and it's it's like things like that. It just it just takes you out of the experience and just doesn't make the game worthwhile anymore. It's like that's gosh, exactly it's what like... it was. Yeah. And I just I, I, I even I got like 12 hours into that. Like I really tried. And uh, I had to give up because I, you know, Vin was just like, "Dude, play this on the PlayStation 4. It is not, yeah. it's not worth that much trouble." Yeah, so I actually, I actually invited Evan around, like when we were at, like doing the E3 coverage. Like I invited Evan around, and I booted up Dragon Age on my PS4. And like I remember just seeing your face; you were just like shaking your head. Yeah, <laughs> no, this is a different game. Yeah, but, it's yeah. Uh, it's sad. Well, uh, I mean, Sh- Shadow of Mordor went through that as well, so same thing. Yeah, that's true. Well, how about you, Mitch? Has there ever been a game where you've tried and it was just too broken that you had to stop playing it? Uh, I'm going a little old school on this one. Uh, back in the Game Boy Advance stage of my childhood, okay, uh, <laughs> there was um, it was a huge. It was when Star Wars the prequels were coming out. It was super big, so I bought the Star Wars Episode Two for the Game Boy Advance. And I, I was, I loved, I really was enjoying that game for the such the longest time. And then there was one level where it's like, oh, it's, um, in like the movie, they're at that, um, planet be- right before they do the, uh, Obi-Wan sneaking, sneaking around. And it's the, before that giant epic Coliseum fight scene, but basically he's oh, yeah. sneaking around in the game. So you had to like jump up and down these platforms. And then every time when I would get to a certain platform, it would like, literally like pixels were disappearing on the screen and it was going black and i was like whoa what is going on and like one time i made it finally because every time i'd do it it would like freeze so i had to take the cartridge out blow on the cartridge put it back in and then i'd have to do it again and finally when i got past the stage and i got to the cut scene it cut out on me and i said enough's enough like i <laughs> i think i was like i can't remember how old i was but i threw a fit that day that was not a good day <laughs> And I don't throw fit now, I promise. I, I'm an adult now, and I'm a big Dude, boy, I, and I don't throw don't, fits, don't. except for at Bloodborne. I throw fits at Bloodborne. <laughs> everyone everyone throws fits at Bloodborne. Like, don't worry about it, man. I, I still I still drop my controller. And we we all squeeze our controller, so it's all good. We all do it. Wouldn't be gamers well, my, without it. 
No, my roommates, they like count how many times like I chuck my controller when I'm playing Butt Bloodborne. <laughs> And they, every time they're just like, okay, when is he going to chuck it? How many deaths does it take? And just like, yeah, every, every time you like, throw the controller, they take a shot. <laughs> yeah, because it's like, it in the corner. it's like I, I'm getting to the point where I finished the game already, but I'm like, I want to like, I wanted a certain weapon. And I really wanted to be really good at that weapon. And I keep dying all the time. And I'm like, this is frustrating. <laughs> but I, I totally agree with you, uh, Vin, on the, on, on the Fallout 4, because I actually bought that game too. And now I feel like I give up on open worlds. I promise I don't. But this is one I did end up like giving up on as well because it was just, it was, it was too jank. But yeah, I yeah, mean, you were going to say something? I played all the way through uh, Fallout 4 and I, I, I enjoyed it to an extent. You know, I, I put 300 hours in it. But even like at the credits, I was like, man, that was, that was a bit too rough. And I was, I was totally, I was totally expecting to buy the season pass and, and get into all the DLC. But before, obviously, all the DLC came out, and it turned out to not be that great anyway. But, yeah, it was worse, I heard. Yeah, like, it was pretty bad. It crashed I, all the time. I didn't, like, after the credits, I was like, you know what? I'm not buying any DLC. I'm not I'm not supporting this game any further because it's like, it was too bad. Like, them boys really need to be sent a message and just say, hey, update your engine because that is, for 2015, that's pretty unacceptable at this point, so... Get on. Yeah. Speaking of updating engines, like Telltale needs to get their shit together. Hey, oh, man, yeah. brother. Hey, man. Walking Dead. Walking Dead was a game which I could get through, but it had a lot of junk. Oh god. Yeah. yeah, like all those games, especially on the PS3, like it's terrible. It was so it's so bad, and it takes those games are so like story driven and character driven, and like when when a bit of the jank happens, just like the stuttering and like the load the loading on playstation 3 is terrible it just takes me out of the the game yeah and i mean uh, it's a shame because they make they make uh they make good games i i I actually found out why the walking dead and all the telltale games like don't run that well it's because their engine for some weird unknown reason they actually only use one of the cores for the processor so even if you've got like a quad core machine like if you're playing on the pc um it'll only use one of them four cores so it doesn't matter how good your machine is, it'll always like have that slowdown. That's how the old Walking Dead games used to be. Maybe they updated it since, but yeah, not not. Doesn't not seem cool, like dude. it. <laughs> nah, it doesn't. I mean, don't don't play them on iPhone. Jesus, that's that's for sure. I, I actually oh. played the first Walking Dead on iPhone. Oh, oh god, <laughs> fortunate. <laughs> then I moved to I, for the season two or whatever it's called. I moved to the PlayStation Three. Yeah, that's a good idea. Cool. So yeah, we should uh, probably move on. Uh, move on to a new section of the podcast. It's only going to be it's going to be a quick, short section, but it's called Evan's Wish List. As uh, Evan is coming up uh, to buying a PS4, we're basically going to each week. I'm going to take a couple of minutes to give like recommendations for our listeners, uh, from our listeners uh, about some of the games which Evan needs to seriously consider uh, for when he actually does finally break into the current generation. But I'm going to kick off this week uh, with my pick. But we've also We've already got like a couple of picks on Sifted. So if you do want to give Evan a recommendation, make sure you message me on Sifted and don't just comment uh, because obviously I want to surprise him every week. So yeah, you can message me on Sifted. I'm at Vin Hill and I will uh, mention you in the in the cast and also give on your recommendation. So this week, Evan, your recommendation for your PlayStation 4 Pro when you finally get it is Dying Light. Okay. Dying. Yeah. Um, uh, so, Dying Light is a first-person action survival horror game set in the vast and dangerous open world. Uh, during the day, players uh, traverse an expansive urban environment overrun by a vicious outbreak, scavenging the world for supplies and crafting weapons to defend against the growing infection. At night, the hunter becomes the hunted uh, as the infected become more aggressive, more dangerous, more frightening. Uh, wait, what? All the... <laughs> I can't fucking read. The most frightening are the predators, uh, which only appear after sundown. Uh, Players must use everything to their power to survive until the morning's first light. Good night and good luck. Ooh. Ooh. Um, So Yeah, from a scale of 1 to 10, how hyped would you be for for this game? Well, I've played Dead Island Riptide. Yeah. And uh, Mm -hmm. if, if you would have said it's Dead Island Riptide, but way better and also par- parkouring you already sold me that's exactly what it is man yeah that's exactly um, what it is uh, my level of interest in this game is a uh it's a nine 
Uh, the gameplay loop in Dead Island. Speaking about a game with jank, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, that game is fucking rough. <laughs> but yeah, like, rough. I still had a really good time playing it because the gameplay loop was just so satisfying. Um, but so yeah, if if Dying Light is anything close to not only you know the Riptide gameplay loop, but also what I've heard about the game already, um, yeah, definitely, definitely interested. This is very, very high on my to play list. Yeah, I mean, this this was one of the first games which I played, and I was like, all right, this couldn't have been done on the last generation. And if it was, it would have been, it would have really suffered. And playing all the way through it, I, I absolutely love the game. It's absolutely fantastic. And the DLCs are absolutely amazing. Yep, I've They're heard really, great really things good. about that as well, those DLCs, yep. yeah. That is, yeah. that is my first recommendation. Uh, so moving on, uh, talking about content callouts. Uh, we'll start off with our community guest this week, which is you, Mitch. What is your content callout of the week from Sifted.net? So mine is actually uh, a little bit farther back about, a, it was, I think it was about last week was when this came out. But uh, if you are a fan of The Nightmare Before Christmas, you'll, <laughs> you'll love this. They literally take the song, What's This? and do it for the um, NX. It's, it's, its title is called What's NX, a parody of What's This from Nightmare Before Christmas. I was dying. Like this, yeah, man, I was, I was is, laughing is in my hilarious. office. Yeah. I, I, I just, really I was like, everyone in my office space was like, what, what are you doing? And I'm like, this is hilarious, but none of them understood games. So I felt so awkward <laughs> in the moment. I'm like, I can't explain this to you, but you know, like those kinds of content where they basically like take a song and then put their own words to it and make it match so well. I mean, I, I give hats to them cause I can't do such a thing. And like, yeah. this one was really well written. It was very, was very like, well done. I mean, even the singing in it was was spot on. Like it sounded I, like Jack Skeleton a lot of the time. It, it did, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's a, it's oh, a really yeah, good. It was video. fantastic. Yeah, it's really I, worth checking out. So yeah, definitely. Like anyone listening to this should definitely go and check out that song. It's really, really well done. Cool. So uh, Evan, what is your pick? Uh, my pick is uh, the Nintendo Classic Mini Famicom Family Computer uh, has finally been announced for Japan. Oh, you mean the Japanese version? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, I saw, uh, actually I found out about it before it like became a news. Uh, there was a, there was an, uh, promoted Amazon, um, tweet in my, in my Twitter feed. That's how I found out about it. Uh, so I was like, what? And like, I checked like all the websites, no one had the story yet. So yeah, it's, uh, I think to be honest though, the, the Famicom looks like a piece of shit. It's fucking ugly. <laughs> <laughs> I would so much, true. much rather have the, 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 NES, uh, one, the yeah. NES. Yeah. And then like the super mm-hmm. Famicom looks way better than the super NES, but, uh, the SNES, right. if you will. But yeah, like I would much rather have the, the classic mini NES. The, the Famicom's so fucking ugly and it's got those hardwired <laughs> controllers. I, I, if those controllers, if you can unplug those controllers, like seriously, fuck that thing. <laughs> or if they don't if they don't make those um wa- those cords long enough it's like you fucking assholes like yeah I like I'm... i was i was looking at a uh, like a preview on uh i think it was GameSpot actually this morning but they were talking about it and they said like it's only the cables are only about three foot or something so <laughs> that's not so that short long. yeah it's really short like to get back to the game selection screen you have to actually push a button on the console you can't actually do it from the controller yeah, it's weird. Uh, also, weird. the controllers, because, you know, the Famicom, you, there was like a, you could put the controllers rested in the system, right? On either side. Right. Yeah. yeah so yeah. because the system's so small, it looks like the controllers has been made smaller <laughs> to accommodate that. Yeah. And then I looked at the classic mini NES and it's a regular sized NES controller. Yeah. So I think they've like, actually made them smaller. Did they but Japanese people have got smaller hands. Yeah. It's weird. <laughs> Um, but yeah, there's eight eight games are are different out of the thirty from the NES to the the Famicom. Mm. I actually went to the official website and I actually posted in 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 the thread, uh, or I, I posted a thread about it and 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 I wrote down which games are different, which games are cut, yeah. and which games are added. Uh, so yeah, it's it's cool. I mean, I don't know. It comes out like the day of the PlayStation 4 Pro, so I'm not necessarily going to get it right away. But uh, <laughs> Is that the competition? <laughs> yeah. That's that's the biggest competition of a lifetime. <laughs> yeah. It's like November, Good luck, te- November 10th. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. yeah. I'm, int- I'm going to buy it at some point. It's, it's cool. Yeah, it looks cool, man. Like, yeah. I mean, if I'm in the States and I see one, I might pick one up because they look really cool. It's a nice little... It's a nice little thing. Like if you were if you're from that era, you know, and you you grew up with them sort of games, yeah, why not? It's like 
50, 60 bucks. Why not, right? Yeah, it's... And you can save. You you can save any time, which is yeah. I, I'm almost surprised they put that in there. Right. Yeah. Me too. Actually, it should be a given. But yeah. All right. Uh, <laughs> it is Nintendo. <laughs> I'm looking yeah. at it right now. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, moving on. Vin, how about you? What is your content call out? Uh, my content call out is to the Battlefield One um, story trailer, which dropped. Um, I wasn't I wasn't that like bothered about the story. Like I'm totally there for the multiplayer and stuff. But when this trailer dropped, I wasn't expecting much because Battlefield sort of never done really decent campaigns as well. Like a lot, that's probably one of the major complaints that the the series actually gets. But man, this trailer, what a fucking trailer! Like, have you guys seen this? Yeah, yeah. I watched it. Like, just the music, the the characters, like the uh, the facial animation of like the characters talking to each other. It just looks absolutely stunning. And I'm really, really hoping that this is a good campaign. And they've got, you know, they've got the the fuel to do it, especially with the the source material of World War One. There's so much they could do, and I'm really, really hoping that this is actually like brings it back because the last good campaign really from Battlefield was probably uh, Bad Company because it had like a lot of comedy relief in it. Like, hopefully they bring that sort of stuff back and and really push it on because it's like people like you, Evan, like you don't like multiplayer that much. You only play games really for the campaign. But like, right. what, what did you what did you get from this? Like, did you? Oh, I mean, it's interesting for a couple of reasons. Uh, one is just like, how many games have we seen that we you can play and learn about World War One? So right. there's it's it has that going for it. And yep. then two, yeah, if the actual campaign is as good as the you know at least that trailer, then yeah. I'm definitely interested. But obviously, for me, this is like. A next buy it next year maybe if if the campaign is good but i'm i'm interested like i it's something i would definitely like to play um cool um when i was watching it uh like it it hit me kind of like you've been uh except i'm i'm more of a i'm a big like i don't i'm not super great at multiplayer especially shooters so for me it's it's a little bit more difficult to just buy it for just the multiplayer side so i usually base it off both sides of the the coin but uh yeah that's fair when i was looking at it like the the whole thing itself was like that that was a really really good trailer so i was thinking about that and i was like okay let me just look back back at a couple of the story trailers from the last couple battlefields and uh when i looked back they were I, I would say this one was still the best one, but the other ones were almost just as similar in right. the way that they showed them. So I was like, in the back of my mind, I'm just like, for me, still I think I wary. have to wait till the. I'm still a bit wary, but like, I agree with you hands down. That was probably one of the best story trailers I've seen in a while. That just gives you an impact within those f- like three or four minutes. Um, but I'm just a little bit hesitant just because of like, I saw the other trailers and they looked kind of similar and I've already, and like, we already know what the result of those were from. So, but no, that's uh, a good point. I mean, of, of all the games that came out, I mean, that one, I think this will be a big testament to show of just, um, cause for me, I was kind of that person for a while of like, I'm kind of sick of the modern age and I kind of want us to go back. I was like, I, when hey, was, where was that world war two game that like came Dude. out every year that I would enjoy every single year. I hope for another world war two game every single year. And when <laughs> like the second, honestly, when, when I was in the battlefield one, uh, beta, the second that I unlocked the, uh, iron sights, bolt action rifle, oh. I was just like, I have missed you so much, old friend. <laughs> and I was just plowing people down because, like, that, they were the games I used to play. Like, I was on Call of Duty World of War for two years straight, pretty much, online playing that game. Wow. And just, Jesus, like, having that gun in my hand again, I was just like, thank fuck for this. Like, I'm so sick of assault rifles. Cool, so we're coming up to the uh, end of the podcast now. Uh, we're just going to give our final thoughts and goodbyes. Uh, first of all, I just want to say thank you to Mitch for joining us, man. It's been really cool to have you on. Oh, yeah, definitely. I, I know I've been a... Uh trying to get on for a, for a couple of weeks and work finally worked out. So I, I've actually been really satisfied. And if I could say one thing for you guys is just, I mean, thanks so much for what you guys do to like be honest, truthfully honest. Uh, for me, I've always said like, oh, I want to get into podcasting someday. I always wanted to like try it. And like, I'm a person that's not, uh, doesn't know what really what they're doing all the way. So to see you guys be able to do and the success you guys had really gave me the, the the motivation to try it myself and i've loved it every step of the way so i i want to say thank you because you guys are kind of some people i look up to personally and i bet it's for some people out there they're they're the same so i mean thanks for what you guys do and i'm i'm, I'm glad you guys are back 
So. Oh, thanks, man. Appreciate oh, yeah, it. Th- yeah, thanks. Yeah, I don't know if anyone else, I don't know if anyone really looks looks up to us, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, maybe it's, maybe uh, just me. I don't know. Well, hey, uh, <laughs> um, uh, Mitch, you have a, don't you have a YouTube channel that you just started? Yeah, I, I, well, I started about uh, six months ago, and I'm going to be re-launching uh, it because I finally got video for actually seeing my face instead of seeing a, a blank screen because I wanted to do more. Uh, so I'll be relaunching that in uh, early or mid-October. But uh, the channel's freeze frame rate, uh, and uh, I do movies, uh, TV shows, and uh, mainly games is really what I'm focusing on first, but right. I really want to do all aspects of it. So um, I have the Game Vamp podcast that I'll start redoing back up again in the next couple weeks. So um, if you like... Why I had to say, feel free to stop on by, uh, and uh, hopefully you enjoy. Cool, cool, awesome. So uh, we're gonna sign off with our Twitter handles and any goodbyes we got. Evan, uh, what is your Twitter handle and sign off? Uh, my Twitter handle is the stand user. Uh, also sifted in giant bomb the same. Uh, Vin, <laughs> how about yourself? Uh, yeah, I am at Vin Hill Art. You can find me on Twitter. You can find some of me and my finger paintings on there. I'm also on <laughs> Sifted.net as well, of course. Um, uh, yeah, I'm at Vin Hill. You can find me on there bitching about Nintendo and causing havoc as always. Uh, yeah, other than that, that's about it. Uh, Mitch, have you got a Twitter? I, I do. I, I, I gotta start using it a little bit more often, but uh, I'm at Mitch Sikor. So M I T C H S I K O R, half of my last name, because. I didn't want to put the full thing on there. so. But uh, you can find me on Sifted as Mitch because I was one of the cool people that got to take my name right away in the beginning. So, uh, yeah. But, yeah, Club feel free to message me anytime. Uh, I'm always up for good conversations and other stuff like that. So if you guys game and want to hang, feel free to let me know. Sweet. Uh, you can also find uh, the actual podcast on Twitter now. We've actually got a Twitter handle, which is podcast underscore reload. You can follow us and our shenanigans. We're going to be posting up on there a bit more like often now now that we got the podcast up and going again so yeah give us a follow on there and you all know when we posted up any new episodes and any new content along the way so other than that i just want to say a massive thank you again to mitch uh, thank you to all our uh, listeners um tuning in and if you do want to be on the podcast you can do by messaging evan on the site so message uh, at the stand user and let him know where you are in the world what microphone you've got and uh when we can actually have you on because i think the list is running a bit thin now right yeah, yeah, we've got about uh, I think th- about a month, and then yeah. if if no one jumps on, then we're gonna go back to some uh, some of the uh, first people that were on the the show, which is actually kind of cool because yeah, they they yeah, were on cool. when we just started and we didn't know what the hell we were doing, so it'd be nice right. to get them back on. Yeah, I really want to well, get like a Thomas <laughs> Dawson on at some point again. You know, that would be really interesting. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> just to see how we fly through it compared to the first time because we yeah, were definitely fine our feet. Where are they now? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> then and now yeah i'll look back on podcast reload actually uh, consider <laughs> consider this my message i want back on all right. <laughs> yeah, right i'll put you i'll put you on the put you on the list actually i uh the thomas i don't know if you listen to the show but i want you back on when uh to have <laughs> to have a nice talk about the the yakuza series at, at some point so uh, oh yeah, yeah thomas awesome yeah he's a big Definitely. fan Cool. Uh, So, yeah, from us, uh, thank you for listening, and we will catch you guys in the next one. So, bye-bye. Ta-ta. See ya. Bye-bye. Sayonara. Hope your game crashes. (laughs) (laughs) All right, that's definitely going in. I hope your game crashes. (laughs) Just like mine.